What what sort of blood pressure do you like levels do you like to We're see? very aggressive, right? I mean, if you look at the sprint trial, I think it's very clear that 120 over 80 or better is the place to be. And that's better than 130 over 85, which used to be the standard. For hypertension, right? That's right. right. Okay. So we're very aggressive. Um, the good news with blood pressure, unlike the lip, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about lipids and a, a listener may come away from that thinking, okay, there's some dietary stuff, but you guys didn't talk about exercise and you're right. Exercise doesn't move lipids that much. Like you're going to be, you're heading down the path of pharmacology much sooner on the lipid front. But blood pressure is just as big a risk factor for cardiovascular disease as lipids. And it's way more amenable to, I hate the word, but lifestyle intervention. You know, losing weight and exercising will fix a lot of people's blood pressure. Not everybody. We have some very lean, fit, healthy people in our practice who still have essential hypertension and it has to be lowered pharmacologically. But for many people, um, you know, losing 20 pounds and exercising, especially cardio, is going to do amazing things on their blood pressure. Have you looked at, um, so I have a, a relative who exercises, uh, good diet, like, uh, the only thing that lowers her blood pressure is hot tubs. Mm, interesting. In addition to the exercise. Interesting. And it's like very, she's also very high stress, like, so mm. she's, which is obviously. I, I wonder if, if I, it's funny, I wonder if it's the impact of, you know, whether it be sauna or, or, uh, or hot tub on, on hypercortisolemia that might be having the indirect effect on blood pressure. Because she is absolutely prone to high cortisol. Yeah. She's like, it's a very high stress. And the other thing is, um, you know, uh, so Dan, he also, I mean, he's exercises a lot diet. Like we have the same diet. Um, my blood pressure. I mean, like I've got phenomenal blood pressure, like always, always, I mean, like really low, <laughs> like I'm, I'm actually on the side of like, I need to be, be make sure I'm not like too low. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he at times, like when measuring it at home, by the way, people at home should just get an automated cuff, right? I mean, like, absolutely. Think, I mean, it's just- Yeah, and then a when, when you finish this story, I'll, I'll walk through to make sure everybody's measuring correctly. Because okay. it's very important. Yes, please do. Yep. Um, he has uh, hemat hemochromatosis. Okay. And um, there's some other relatives that had it and noticed that their blood pressure was high. Like, we're talking people that are like very, phys like doing lots of- Super These healthy. are like, you know, running marathons. They're doing, you know, like they're very super healthy. And donating blood seemed to help normalize the blood pressure for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't know. I, Which I is important for obviously getting rid of the iron and hemochromatosis. Right. Um, but the other thing that's really helped, so hmm. Dan is doing that now. But the other thing that seems to really help him, I mean, he does sauna, hot tubs, exercise, you know, and there'll be times when he's in his office working and he's like 135 systolic. And it's like, what in the world? That's crazy, right? Um, green shakes help him. So yeah. like- tons of like nitrates so a bunch of like green vegetables and these are like nasty tasting shakes these aren't mm. like good tasting it's ones not, it's not ag no yeah. um and, and that will that will help him as well so um yeah exercise is very important but like there's also H like has he tried like coca flavonoids things like that you know we i was i give that to so another story no i wasn't doing that we, we haven't been doing that because we take a lot of our vitamins at night we do take some fish oil in the morning i did mention that to him because another story my mother um who is sedentary she's lost a lot of weight but she's still overweight um she you know she she she's losing the weight was great i mean she's lost like 75 pounds like she's lost a lot of weight wow. if you look at the pictures it's like years to her life have been extended just by that it, alone um but i can't like i can get her in the sauna sometimes um but it's still uh, it's still like a little bit more of an effort um but one thing about her is she will take the vitamins i give her and um she's got she's homozygous for mthfr if she's not taking a high dose like B supplement along with like a methylfolate, like her homocysteine will go high and her blood pressure goes up. And she had stopped taking all those because she wasn't over my house all the time where I was giving it to her every day. And so I, I got her, you know, this like sort of like battery of supplements that I was giving her, um, including all the, the methylfolate and um, lowering her, th things that were lowering her homocysteine along with magnesium and cocoa flavanol. So I was giving her cocoa via. Uh, f she was getting four of those pills. She gets four and she still takes them. Her blood pressure went from like 155 to like 125. Okay, her doctors are like, they wanted to get her on antihypertensive treatment before she came to me. And it's like, and this has been like months now. 
it's 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 happy you know she measures it at home she takes she does logs i mean so i'm very happy about that uh you know the fact that she's been able to do that um but again it just it shows that there are they definitely are the lifestyle factors, I know you hate that word, but, you know, exercise being one of the main ones, but there are people also that in addition to being very physically active, like they still get high blood pressure, you know? Yeah. yeah. And there, and, 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 you know, I don't think we have the outcome data to look at the direct impact of, um, coca flavonoids or all the suite of B vitamins that are necessary to, to lower homocysteine and their impact on blood pressure. But here's what we do know. And again, this is mechanistic and it's very strong mechanistic but that doesn't necessarily equate to outcomes. But we know that as homocysteine is elevated, it impairs the clearance of something called asymmetric and symmetric dimethyl arginine. I don't know if you've talked about ADMA and SDMA. And ADMA and SDMA directly and indirectly in inhibit nitric oxide synthase. So the we know that homocysteine is associated with poor outcomes in cardiovascular disease. Um, and I think that this mechanism of homocysteine impairing the clearance of ADMA and SDMA is the, is the mechanistic link because when you directly inhibit nitric oxide synthase in the endothelium, you are preventing the creation of nitric oxide. And of course, that's what coca flavonols actually do the opposite of that. So I think the one, two punch of lowering homocysteine and raising uh, nitric oxide synthase activity via coca flavanol uh, could could certainly explain a reduction in blood pressure. That's really interesting. I, I was giving her the coca flavanol just because I had seen the studies on increased blood flow, and I'm like, okay, that's, that's we need that. You know, like yeah. we need that. Um, measuring blood pressure. Yeah. So um, this was established really clearly through the sprint trial, and and this has basically been now kind of the gold standard for how we use an automated cuff. So that trial was done by. Um, having individuals sit for five minutes, check a blood pressure, no stimulation during that time. So not talking, not looking at a phone, not doing anything, and then repeat that two more times. So it's a 15, I'm not suggesting this is what Dan does or what anybody yeah. does, but just so you understand at the level of how the trials are done, you're sitting for 15 minutes, having a check at five, 10 and 15 minutes. You're sitting like this, wow. the cuff is two inches above uh, the elbow, and um, the cuff is right at the level of the right atrium. So, you know, you're, and, and by the way, if anybody wants to do this experiment at home, it's really interesting to do. Put, a, put an automated cuff on your arm and put your arm here, put your arm above your head and put your arm in the right spot and look at how big a difference you get. So measurement errors are a huge problem. Being overstimulated is a huge problem. So you really wanna make sure you're getting an accurate reading of that blood pressure. And we have our patients do that twice a day uh, you know, an early in the day and a late in the day check. And then, you know, we just have everybody do that for two weeks to start. And that's, that's what's considered your blood pressure. So, you know, the idea that you're going to walk into the doctor's office and get a blood pressure is not valuable for most people. So when, when someone says, what's your blood pressure, it should be, what's the average of those two weeks of twice daily checks done where you take the five minute protocol and test perfectly. And I think everybody listening to this should, should know that number.